All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, I would like to take a moment to thank you for taking time out of your day to come explore Microsoft Teams with me. My name is Mandy Gagliardi. I am a training developer for the OCIO, and I'm joined with Jason Pollack, who is basically head of the project team for Teams, and Teresa Gosser. And we're going to uh, take a little time today to talk about Microsoft Teams. Uh, we are going to explore the basic Microsoft Teams environment and talk about why we're moving to this environment. Um, I will show you how to find a person, find a team, create a team, and the most important thing is additional resources where you can go to find out more about Microsoft Teams uh, once we're done here today um, and to become a little more comfortable with uh, the program and the environment and see what it can actually do for you. Uh, I'm certain you guys have all heard this before, uh, why the move? Uh, we need, really need to consolidate services down into one platform. Right now we've got multiple platforms all over the place. I'm certain you've seen Buckeye Box and Microsoft Teams and OneDrive and Skype for Business. And we're gonna be consolidating everything down, eliminate service duplication, which will make it a lot easier for you to do your jobs. What do I use? Uh, and also, of course, saving time and money. Um, Microsoft Teams is a great application that can help anyone that uses it save time in, in the way that they work both as an individual and uh, in a group environment. All right, so let's take a look first at starting Microsoft Teams. When you launch Microsoft Teams, you will need to log in uh, you will log in using your Ohio State username and password. Uh, if you are, and you need to use your full email address. So it's lastname.number at osu.edu and your current password that you set at my.osu.edu. If you are a Med Center employee that is attending this session, please keep in mind you do need to use your Med Center credentials to log on, which is firstname.lastname at osumc.edu. You guys know your email addresses, so you have to use that one. All right. Give me one second. I'm trying to elevate someone so they can handle your questions. That does bring up uh, one uh, piece that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, if you have questions, please use the Q&A panel. So we have one location where we're seeing questions and both Jason and Teresa will try to field those for you. Some of them I will answer live, some will be answered in the chat session itself. Um, okay, so once you log in, uh, this clearly brought me back to my activity. I use Teams quite a bit. Uh, on the left-hand side of the screen is how you're going to navigate through the different sections of Microsoft Teams. The first panel is activity, and this just shows you all the different uh, actions that have occurred on your account. Uh, this stays. <laughs> There's your chat. Then we have teams, assignments. I love this feature, calendar. This allows me to see my calendar right within Microsoft Teams. Calls, this will allow me to quickly communicate with other team members. Um, you have favorites that People can be added as a favorite, um, suggested contacts or people that you communicate with through Teams quite often. Um, files, this is a nice section. Anytime a file is shared by you or with you, it will appear here uh, for quick, easy access. Below that, we have the more button. Uh, this will show you the different apps. Um, these apps, are supposed to be approved, <laughs> but I know the team is working on getting this cleaned up so it shows just the approved apps. Those are ones that have gone through security and are approved for our use through Microsoft Teams. And the most important button I'm going to show you in the Teams interface is in the lower left-hand corner, and it's help. I know many times uh, I've been training for 23 years uh, when Microsoft releases a new product, uh, we feel kind of left to the wind, uh, 
but they've really stepped up their game with documentation and training content when it comes to any of the Office 365 products. Uh, in the help menu, uh, you have the ability to go look at help topics. And this is Microsoft specific content. They also have training right within Microsoft Teams. And these are many times short, quick videos on how do I do a particular task? This is great if you don't have a lot of time to dedicate. And then there's also the what's new. This will show you what is up and coming down the roadmap for, or what has just been released for Microsoft Teams. In that vein, there is one other uh, piece of help information that I do want to show you and that is our new Administrative Resource Center. The Administrative Resource Center was created to provide a location for all of the different services to store their documentation on how do you use a service. So we have created a page specifically for Microsoft Teams. You can access the Administrative Resource Center or what we call the ARC uh, through admin.resources.osu.edu. Uh, on the main page, you will see some of our top services. This is definitely not all of them. Uh, most often people will go directly to a page though, they'll link to it from a training link or uh, from a website somewhere. So it'll be rare that you'd have to navigate through this home page. Uh, but if you do go directly into Microsoft Teams, you'll see that we have created a lot of content and consolidated a lot of content into one location. So you should be able to find help quickly. Okay, so on the Teams ARC page, we have a section for quick start guides. This is a downloadable reference guide, something that you could keep next to your desk if that makes you comfortable for quick and easy ways of working through Microsoft Teams. In the job aids section, we have some OSU specific guidance. This is going to be a very important one uh, for people inviting OSU MC people as team members. Uh, when we're working with medical center employees, we have to remember to invite them by their medical center ID. Uh, under administrative guidance, we have uh, just some articles that might be helpful for you on how to use Teams, uh, not necessarily the ins and outs of clicking buttons, but different uh, settings, <laughs> ways of structuring things, for example, team types, private channels, Teams on mobile devices. And then in the getting started section, uh, getting started with Teams, this all points out to Microsoft documentation on exactly step-by-step -step how to work through Microsoft Teams. So if you wanna know how do I add a member to my team, we've got an article here, adding members to Teams. Under video demos, we do have one for best practices and beyond. Um, I wish that we could say, this is exactly how you're supposed to use Microsoft Teams, but uh, we're a very large organization and every department works differently. So we have collected together uh, different best practices from organizations across the country uh, for ideas that you could then take and try to implement in your team structure. Under training, we have so much available. A short video demonstration of Microsoft Teams, shorter than what I'm going to go over here, but uh, it is very overarching. Uh, there is instructor-led live Teams training available for you to sign up for at your convenience or anyone on your team. And it is live instructor-led. Uh, you have to sign up for a particular date and time and there will be an instructor to answer questions. And then we've got a couple of other smaller training content pieces. What is Teams? There's the Teams learning collection. Of course, they do help point to the help button within Teams because that's a great tool. And if you really want to dive deep into Microsoft Teams and learn all the ins and outs, we do have training paths available through lynda.com. Uh, there's Microsoft Teams essential training and Teams tips and tricks. Under resources and related services, even though this page is about Microsoft Teams, if you've played in it at all, you do understand that there's a lot to it and it interacts with other services that we offer, such as Outlook and OneDrive. And we also did include Skype for Business in here because Teams will eventually contain everything that Skype for Business does as well. We do have some FAQs. If you've got some questions on using uh, Microsoft Teams, this is constantly updating and we're constantly adding more questions. 
troubleshooting unknown issues if something's not working right, or you want to know if you've got some kind of limit, such as a name that you can provide or file sizes. We, we try to have all of that in here. And in the help section, you have you know, the IT service desk. Anytime you have trouble with teams, you can give them a call or pop through self-service. So we'll visit this page while we go through content uh, so I can show you where your questions uh, might possibly be answered. And again, at the end. So let's get back over to Microsoft Teams. The environment is very simple. Navigation along the left, work in the main content area. Right, so let's take a look at finding a person. So let's say I have to talk to my manager, Teresa Gosser, because I want to ask her a question. Up here at the very top of your Teams window, you have a, a search field, and it searches really everything. Uh, but the first thing it's going to search for is for people. So I'm going to type her last name. And because she is someone I communicate with, often she is at the top of that list. However, it does search for other people. As you can see, there are multiple other Gossers, along with group communications that I've had that Trace has been part of. Um, some other names I like to look up. Rick Hunter is a communication strategist. I like his name uh, because typically it will show me people whose first name might be Hunter. I'm not seeing that today, though. Uh, one other person, though. Randy Honkinen, she is another um, communication strategist. She's a senior communication strategist. And I use her last name because she is like one of the only Honkinens on campus. She's only a dot four, but it does show content, context searching. So you can see Hank came up as well, um, just in case that's what we meant. So lots of searching. So let's say I want to talk to someone to check something real quick. Teresa Marvin's not in here, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to message you. So I have someone to talk to. So when you choose a name, the chat comes up and you can talk. And we do talk about non-work stuff in here. Don't read my chats. <laughs> All right, so chatting, that's, that's super simple. You search for the name, you choose the name, a chat window immediately opens. If you would like to add multiple people to the chat, you can do that as well. There is a... Um, add people button in the upper right hand corner. It looks like two little people with a plus sign, very standard for a Microsoft product. But you click that, you choose the name of the person. All right, so I'm gonna type Jason Pollock. I select him and click add. And you can add multiple people. It's not a one at a time thing. So I could choose Jason and then I could choose, I'm looking in my list, Alex Lane, and then I could choose Alexandra. You can just keep going. Now we have a brand new conversation because it is a group. Great. And I can't type today. That's okay, it's morning. So chatting one-on-one -on -one with an individual, um, important. Uh, but now let's get to Teams, which is really why uh, you guys are all here. On the left-hand side of the screen, there is a Teams button uh, when you, excellent. I have not had a chance to look at the Q&A, so that is good to know. Um, if we click on Teams, this will show me all of the teams that I am part of. Uh, this, these are teams that I have been added to or teams that I have chosen to become part of or teams that I have created. For example, I'm in the OSU Teams pilot because we're doing all of these. Uh, I'm in Marcom team. Um, marketing communications and training, we're a large team. Um, I created the training team, which is a separate team from the Marcom team. I really could have just done a channel in there though, so we will take a look at that. Uh, we've got the Administrative Resource Center, and then we've got public groups like the OCIO OD Wellness Group, Parent Connect Group. So there are lots of ways to use Teams beyond just your day-to-day -day work. Now, <clears throat> to find a team, 
uh, you would click the join or create team button in the upper right hand corner. Uh, if you want to join a team, it needs to either be a public team, which would appear here. Uh, you can see the keep teaching classroom that's public, application security that's public, the culture team professional development, again, public. Uh, if it's a private team that I've been invited to, I will be provided a code. And that is what you would use here. Now, if we do have some Med Center employees on here, I understand when you go into Teams, you will not have the ability to create a team. Uh, there is a request process in place uh, right now. And I know there's a lot of things going on in the background, a lot of decisions being made. Um, I don't know what the end result is going to be, but for right now to create a team, it does have to go through that approval process Med Center wise. All right, so to join a team, let's join oh, online programs network. I haven't been in there, but it sounds good. Let's go ahead and join that team, see what they have going on. Okay, I'm joined, let's get in there. There we go, I clicked back on my Teams button if you guys didn't see that. All right, we're in here and they've got a bunch of different channels. You can think of channels as mini groups inside of the team, uh, targeted communication, a targeted topic inside of your team. So in this case, general, that, those are just general messages that are being sent out. And um, they've got a channel about program marketing, um, student success. All right, so to create a team, Okay, and we're gonna to go to join or create a team. And when we click create team, you're going to be asked what team type. There are four different types of teams. And really the differences between them, between some of them can be very subtle. So I'm gonna flip back over to the ARC. And we do have an article in here about team types. That will answer your different questions that you might have about the different types of teams. There are class team types, PLCs, professional learning communities, uh, staff, and other. Under class, you'll see the different features and the goals of that team type. The reason I talk about class real quick is uh, that's the one that's a little bit different. Uh, this is available to faculty and staff. Students cannot create a class team. But they can be part of one. And the big thing that I want to tell anybody in here that is thinking about using it, it does not connect to Sukarman Canvas. So even though there are assignments in here, they're not going to port back into Canvas. Uh, most often, you would create a PLC or staff. And you can find out details about them in here. So going back, I'm going to go ahead and create a staff team. Whenever you create a team, you're going to have to specify a name. You want a name to be descriptive. Um, calling um, a team training like I did, probably not the best idea if it's going to be public. <laughs> but it was private and it was only people I added. Uh, you want something where when people are looking at a bunch of panels that show the different teams, that they can differentiate the different teams from one another. You don't want duplicates or things that are not easily understood. Um, I'm not going to be creative here because we're in a demo. So this is test for webinar. Uh, you can put a description in another way to help tell people about the team before they join it. And you can set your privacy level. Now, this only has to do with whether people can see it or if people need a code to add. So we've got private, only team owners can add members or public, anyone in your organization can join. Um, yesterday, I did a public one and then everybody was joining like crazy. So we're not going to do that today. I am going to do a private one. And I'm going to click next. All right. And now I can add people. Um, to add people, just like when you were searching, you type in their name. So I'm going to add Jason Pollock. And again, Teresa Gosser. Sorry for picking on you guys today. All right, they have been added. 
Once you add them, you can also make them an owner. So we now have a new team. A team will be created with one channel. That's the general channel. That's where basic general communication occurs. But you have the ability to create your own channels inside of a team. Again, think of them as more targeted groups within your team. So if you have, uh, let, let's take training, for example. Uh, I have the training team, and inside each of the Inside the training team, I could have a channel for each project we're currently working on. To create a new channel within the team, you will click the ellipse button to the right of the name of your team, as long as you are the owner, and from here you can manage the team. You can add channels, you can add more members, you can leave the team. Please don't leave a team without an owner. Jason, I'm going to ask you, I never asked this, can, so can the only owner leave the team without an owner? So no. no. Okay. I just want to make sure. That yeah. so by choice of an owner themselves self, self pulling out, yeah. they cannot. But if okay. a team has a single owner and that owner leaves the university and say their account becomes disabled, <laughs> that can happen. And administratively, we can go in and assign a different owner to uh, provide the same function. So if that ever happened, just contact the IT service desk and they can help them out. Correct. Right. Awesome. All right, um, you can edit the team, get a link to the team to invite people in and manage tags. Tags here are, are kind of like tags you find, hashtags that you find elsewhere. It's just a way of making searching easier. So maybe you tag different teams that are about project management with a PM tag. And then if you search for that tag, all of those teams would come up. And that's not a, a good practical application of it, but it's just how it works. Um, it's just going to ease your searching capabilities. Okay. Um, so let's say I add a channel. Okay, you can add any content in. and privacy standard accessible to everyone on the team, or you can also specify groups within your team to make this channel accessible to. Again, it's just all about providing you as much control as possible and as much organization as possible. One of the great things about having a team, it's, a one, it's one place for everyone to communicate. And when I say communicate, I mean much more than just chatting, as you've seen. Um, whenever you have a team, across the top of the team, based upon the team type, you will have different options. Posts, that's your chatting. But if files are shared inside of a team, they will be stored here in this team folder. Uh, this is great for sharing documentation on a project or within a small group circle within your team. Uh, because this is a staff um, team, I have a staff notebook. If you're familiar with OneNote, that's what this is. It is a OneNote object for your team. And if you haven't used OneNote, I recommend you play with it and start using it if you like to be organized. I love notes, <laughs> I love taking notes. All right, so we are running out of time. So Teresa, you, I know that you and Jason have been monitoring uh, the Q&A for me and I really, really appreciate that. Do you have some questions uh, that have not been asked, not been answered, pardon me, by me yet? Hi, Mandy. There's quite a few questions, actually, that haven't been answered yet. Um, and I was just starting to answer this one, um, but I thought it was something that people might be interested in. But it says, um, so there's no way to turn on video and audio for Teams like there is with Zoom, right? Well, we have um, team to team video and audio. Yeah, I mean, yes, we can. Uh, I have team meetings quite often through Microsoft Teams. We can't pick up Teams and call Donato's yet, 
I mean, we can't do that, but you do have video and audio that's out for everybody now, Jason, right? Everybody on the university side. Right. So if you're med center, then no, maybe not. But if you're a university employee, you should have video and audio meetings. Okay. Um, I can just work down the list if that, if that yeah. helps with the remaining questions. Um, so Michael asked, can the file being shared in channels reside on the K drive or will it need to be on one drive? Well, it needs to be putting it in here is technically behind the scenes, putting it into one drive. The next question, Christopher asks, is the team's client an automatic update to our computers or do we need to request through the OCIO slash individual IT departments to have it installed? Jason, I'm going to defer that question to you because it's more project based. Sure. So it does. It is an application that needs to be installed. There is a, a web app view as well that can uh, uh, can be used. If it's not on your machine, if you're part of OCIO or MITS, it's available in the self service of the software center to install, or you can reach out to the service desk and they'll get you taken care of. Uh, if you're uh, in an individual department, the same thing. If you don't have the application, you want to contact your service desk. We are working to uh, contact all the departments to make sure that they have a plan to roll this out, the, the application out to everybody. I'm just logging right. real quick, I hope, maybe. To the web interface that Jason mentioned, I'm a big fan of uh, using the app whenever possible, but I will say that the OneDrive, um, Web interface is fantastic. Got a duo pass. Sorry. Yeah. And on the left hand side, once you log into our web interface of Office 365, which is Office 365.osu.edu, if you haven't been there yet. Um, you have your app launcher over here on the left-hand side, and Microsoft Teams is right there. My whole life has been running really slowly today, not just my computer, so bear with me. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so if you would prefer to use the web interface, I mean, it's, it's here. You have that ability. You get out of there. All right, next question, Teresa. Um, next question, Peter's asking, he says he cannot log into Teams. Okay. Um, is What we would need to know a lot more, is he med center? Is he university? Uh, what is he trying to log in on? Is he using his full email address and current password? We really can't troubleshoot that here in the webinar. Um, so what should he do if he wants would, to find out how to do that? If he's a university employee, he needs to reach out to the IT service desk. If he's med center, then he needs to contact the med center help desk. Thanks. Um, the next question, with the retirement of the Buckeye box, will these files be transferred to teams by OCIO? Well, um, they will be transferred to OneDrive, <laughs> not to Teams. Um, OneDrive is the storage location, and Teams kind of has a channel into OneDrive, uh, but it is not the storage solution. OneDrive is the storage solution. Teams um, stores things in OneDrive for us, and we access them through the Teams interface. Uh, so yes, we're going to move things over, but that's actually part of the migration project and not really part of Microsoft Teams. Let me pull up a page. Again, I'm gonna go back to the ARC. Oops, here it is, yep. Um, now I've stayed on the Teams page. However, if you go to Office 365 on the ARC, I have created a page called Migration to OneDrive for Business from Buckeye Box. And in here, we talk a little bit about the migration. We're not gonna leave everybody high and dry, promise. Um, under using migration to OneDrive for business from Buckeye Box, we talk about OneDrive, we talk about Buckeye Box. I have a job aid in here, preparing your individual files for migration. Yes, we're gonna move them, but there are a lot of things that you can do ahead of time 
to get everything ready. So your move, your, your transfer of information is as easy and seamless as possible and so that you can get access to your files quickly. So this is preparing your individual files for migration. We talked to you about what accounts are, how you can find your files, how to clean up your Buckeye Box folders so you're only moving content that you really have to move, and some things that aren't going to be able to be moved automatically. For example, comments in a box file. Unfortunately, there's no way for us to capture those. It is going to have to be a manual process. So we've walked you through that. We're not going to leave everybody to figure it out on their own. Um, we also have some frequently asked questions about the migration. So if you are watching and you are concerned about the migration, come in here, take a look, see if some of these questions help and kind of help you out a little bit. So yes. Andy, I'd like to talk about, there's a couple other questions yeah. here that are coming in about um, the migration and, and storage and some of that stuff there. So we, sure. we do have a project to move files through there that'll move individual files into OneDrive out of box personal files and also departmental box folders which would move into more of a team like structure through there um, a couple other questions here about how do you store files and stuff through there with uh with that this one's question is how do you interact with onedrive sharepoint from teams so when you're in a channel that is a storage location when you're on the files tab uh, so any files that you add there or create there under the new dialog that's within your team that's it, cloud-based storage uh, through there, there's nothing you have to do from, from that perspective. If you have files outside of there that you want to be a part of the team, uh, it may be stored on your local machine or it's stored on a network file server, you can drag them into there to make them available to the team uh, from that perspective um, through there. And then no matter what device or client you use, so if Mandy's in the web, she'll see that, or if she's in the PC client, or if I have to be on the mobile phone and I go into that team and I go look at the files, then I will see it through there with it. And that, that's really the, the, the goal behind uh, Teams and, the, and different channels is to give you some organization around those files as you bring it in for different uh, projects and, and features. I'm just showing them what you're talking about. So I uploaded it from the desktop and now I am looking at it through the web interface. And I did the roll on roll off request final product. Anything sorry, else? One other, yeah. sorry, one other thing that's I don't know, it's kind of cool for me is as you're doing this, as you bring the files in, obviously a, a PDF doesn't apply, but you've got Word files, you've got Excel files, you've got PowerPoint documents. As you add those documents into a team like this, uh, as people edit them from there, uh, either there with inside of Teams or in the web app or in the desktop app, th those edits are all co authored. So you don't have to worry about file locking, like one person's in the Word document, but you're not. Uh, so you can't do anything. No, it's completely co-authored. So you can be editing simultaneously in that document uh, through there. That's awesome. Next. Okay, um, so the next on the list is when you search for people, will it only show you people on your team? I just tried searching for Hunter and did not get the same results that Mandy showed us. Well, it will be dependent upon uh, your most recent searches, who you consistently search for. So when Hunter is a huge name at Ohio State, like huge. So when I look up Hunter, I'm going to see Rick Hunter first. If you have never communicated with Rick Hunter before and he is one of a 2,000 hunters on campus, you're probably going to have to go further than just Hunter. You will have to do Hunter, comma, R to get to Rick. Um, eventually, though, you wouldn't have to do that. So, no, it's not going to show you just people on your team, but it is going to show you people that you communicate with most often, which in theory is probably your team. Okay, thanks. Does the search, the next question, does the search work effectively between Med Center and non Med Center employees? I'm going to defer that to Jason because when I want a Med Center employee, I just put in their full email address. So, Jason? Yeah, so depending on the, the search that you're doing, if you're, you're searching for a person up there in the, the, the action bar at the top, the, um, by doing name that number, that it's just going to find what's on the essentially the university side, their, their OSU uh, EDU equivalent. If you're adding them into a team, 
when you go into the add member dialog through there, you know, you add them first name dot last name at osumc.edu, that will search and, and find them that way with it. So it depends on where you're, you're looking at through there with the, the individual search. Okay. Uh, next question, um, and this is somebody, I think she had one question already answered, um, but other people might have the same question. Anyway, um, clarification for Jessica's question. Um, I found calls, but could not find assignments. Oh, um, I'm gonna assume she means the navigation button on the left-hand side. Uh, if that's the case, are they Med Center? Cause I'm not certain if that's turned on for Med Center. So more than likely it, it, they are Med Center. The yeah. assignments is because we're an academic organization and that's what our team's environment is tagged as. So certain things happen because of that. Forcing the assignment button to be there, even though not, we may not use it, is, is that part there. That is why. Makes sense. Uh, the next question, Sarah's sharing that they've noticed a web-based um, and the desktop versions of Teams do have differences. And sometimes the web version doesn't update with information right away if someone has used the desktop version to post new content. Will there be a recommendation for desktop versus web? That's a project question. I don't so, think we tell people. No, so from a functionality standpoint, Teams is a rather different application in, in, in the development goals that the, the, the vendor has, and that is to keep it feature parity across the different platforms. So when you're looking at a desktop client on PC versus Mac, and we even have a Linux client now, uh, to the web client and the mobile, they are feature parity through there with it. So they've done a very good job with that. Obviously, anything inherently on the web, there are a lot of things that can influence or affect the, the latency and the reaction of certain things um, through there with it. So it's, there's, there's not saying use one over the other inside there with it, it's situational, uh, especially from a feature perspective. It's not like, well, the PC version has all of these features, the Windows, uh, uh, the Mac version doesn't, or the web version doesn't. It's not, they're pretty close in parity through there. Okay. Uh, the next question. So um, Deb is asking, so if I'm trying to encourage my office group to look at instant messaging in general, I should push using Teams rather than Skype so there is no transition later? I'm not going to tell you that, but I'm pushing for it. Um, I, I always go to Teams first, and then I will use Skype if somebody doesn't respond on Teams. The future is going to be Teams. Um, and I don't want people to think that it's something that we all just decided that, hey, we want to do. Microsoft is not going to support Skype. So it's, it's not a desire, it's, it, it's a have to, we have to do this. I say it's a good idea to start now so you don't have to make that transition later, but that's just an opinion. Okay, um, I think from a change management standpoint, it's always a good idea to do that. It does help the transition later on. Yes. Um, so Kayla is asking, um, during a regular business day, I'll have Outlook, Teams, and Skype open on my computer. Is that correct? At least, yes. Those are the three things that you will have to have open until we can fully phase out uh, Skype for business. The next question, um, is there a limit to the number of teams you can create? That's a Jason question. <laughs> there is. It's 250 per person. Well, that's that 250 magic number again. 250 yeah. per person? Yes. Not wow. that we want people creating 250 teams no. uh, through there. You get team fatigue because you're in so many uh, through there with it, but it, it is a rather large limit through there. Okay. Next question. Um, Tracy's asking, can you see who is on a team before you join? I don't believe so. I've never wanted to. <laughs> but let's see. Well, I can get in here and manage the team. So I think so, it's probably going to do based upon your permissions in that team. Yeah, you, you cannot. If you're not yet a member of a team, when you go to join it, either from the link or from the public piece, it'll tell you how many people are in it, but not who they are. 
If you can recognize the people in their tiny little pictures, that might give you a clue. Like, I know that's Max. But you won't know the whole team. Sorry, no. Okay, this is a question from Jenny. Um, hopefully you'll under, I'm not sure, I am sure of what she's asking, but she says her department has started Teams. I had someone send an email on Teams sent to me. Will I always get those notification emails? I guess I can just delete them after going into Teams and answering the question. Is she talking about, okay, so she received an email in Outlook that was sent from Teams as if she missed a interaction or that's what it sounds like one of the notification emails oh so I, I'll, yeah, I'll, I can Jason. fill that one so teams is designed for you know team collaboration and to to involve you in the conversations that are going on and with that obviously it's going to give you a lot of pop-ups it'll give you emails there's quite a robust notification control system in there so from an individual channel level you can choose to not receive information from a team, you can choose not to receive information under the little ellipses beside the channel name or the, the team name. Under the settings, under your avatar in the, the right corner, there's a notifications area. And from in there, you can say whether you want banners and emails and reminders and, and all that kind of stuff through the with it. So you can go through sort of depending on which ones, um, I'm not sure from the, the question what email is getting, but one of those should cover what you're looking at through there. Okay. Next question. Um, this is another question. I don't, I don't remember if we've already answered this um, in this session, but um, Kelly's asking um, whether professionals outside OSU can be added to a team. I know the answer, but Jason, you're more eloquent at explaining it. I'm going to let you do this. <laughs> so, the OSU Teams environment is open and allows external collaborators to be invited into Teams, provided that they are using Teams in their home organization. When you invite somebody external, um, a med center person to, into a team, or somebody from another university or professional organization, uh, they are a member of the team and as full-fledged as you'd invite somebody internal, meaning they have full ability to see all the chats, see the files, read, write files, do all that kind of stuff there. You're making that. So you want to be uh, cognizant of that as you bring people in. If you use private channels, that gives you an option to kind of restrict who can see uh, certain files and chats from within that. So that's an option there. But as long as they're using Teams in their home organization, they can be added as a guest into our team. Unfortunately, the Med Center folks that is currently uh, restricted, you cannot invite people into your Teams at this time. Uh, if the, the another question that was further down, I, I saw it scroll by. Somebody asked if they don't use Teams in their home organization, can they still be added? No, they do need to be a Teams user in their own organization. There are other options for sharing files with them that can be looked at, but to be a part of a team, they their home org, they have to have Teams enabled. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab a question out of the Q and A that popped up just so I can answer it from um, that was asking about the folder hierarchy in the files area. Um, that's actually a OneDrive question. <laughs> um, yes, we can see the, the, the list of files there in, in Teams, but if you want to talk about folder hierarchy and folder structure and things like that, that's, that's going to be a OneDrive thing. So come back in two weeks for OneDrive and you'll get to see how we can control all of that structure. Uh, oh, and one other, no, Teams is not going to replace Carbon Canvas. Okay, go ahead, Teresa. Um, okay, the next question is, why can you only add one person at a time? It takes a long time for a large class. Jason, I'll let you field that one too. I do think we got this question yesterday. Yes, so from inside the, the Teams client, from that perspective, yes, it is only one at a time. Uh, it to be added through there with it. There are some automation things underway and some other integrations being discussed about uh, being allowed, allowing people to import a list of people into a team or um, programmatically setting it off of, of other pieces there. We, we are not integrating with uh, the SIS system or anything like that to sync 
uh, class lists over, although there's some discussions about strategy and down the road where this kind of goes if we, we go into that. But unfortunately, right now, yes, it is only limited to be one at a time, but we are evaluating some other options to allow that to be a little easier to expand. Okay, we have a question, um, and I'm not sure if it's related to this um, session or if it's related to Teams, but somebody's asking, can we talk about how to eliminate the echo when other people talk? There are so many things that can contribute to causing that echo um, that we would have to spend time troubleshooting your microphone, your uh, speakers, your internet connection. So I wish I could say, yes, I can show you exactly how to eliminate it. No, I can't. Um, if you're at home, uh, my recommendation, make certain you only have one speaker on, try not to have anybody else on your network, especially if you're doing a very large webinar like this, um, and you know, limit any outside influence. Um, Jason, do you have any tips or tricks you'd want to add? So there's, uh, yeah, there's there's so much there with it. Um, you hit the biggest ones there. Um, another one that, that we we com my team commonly sees is people joining from two devices. So they'll they'll join the meeting with their computer and the audio there, and then they'll also dial in on a cell phone or dial in on a landline. So they've got two pieces. Don't do that. Connect one way uh, only through there. We've also seen people using uh, laptop speakers and mic that do not support noise canceling. So you you get the you hear the person twice because it, your computer's picking it up like you're speaking um, uh, through there with that. Uh, unfortunately, there's just uh, there's a lot of things there, but those are the most common things that, that we see. It's more environment driven. So hopefully people aren't experiencing that a lot today in this session. And that was the general question. Um, if they are, we apologize. I'm, I'm not picking up echo for us, but that's not to say that some people aren't. Um, anyway, next question. Um, Susan is asking, how can I track attendance on a meeting I set up if I do not attend the meeting? Oh. So th this is a, actually, this is a, a really interesting one, Susan. Uh, there is a, a way to get attendance in a meeting. Actually, it's, it's a download. It's a really great report, but it's currently only available for the organizer of the meeting. So if you are the organizer, you can go in there and in the participants panel, there is a uh, little button that'll let you download an attendee report. It's really nice because it tells you the date, time they connected, they left, that kind of stuff through there with it. But it is only available to the organizer of the, the, the meeting. So the organizer post meeting can go in and get that. But if you're not the organizer, you cannot gain access to that cur currently. There are several uh, requests to uh, expand that to co-organizers or, or, or different level per, per presenter through there, but nothing is uh, in place at this time. Thanks, Jason. Um, the next question, Laura's asking, what items um, or conversations in teams are subject to public records laws? I think anything <laughs> that's in there. Jason? Yeah, it, it's, it's a tough thing through there with it when you get into public uh, records retention and, and discovery and stuff through there with it. Um, the individual like group chats and, and that through there, and just like Skype days, it's been considered water cooler conversations, but obviously there's been some recent things in a few years that's kind of altered that, but there's no no consensus. So what, what I will say is, you know, don't write it if you don't want to see it published uh, through there. Individual one-on-one -on -one chats are deleted after a year automatically. The group conversations, so from the, the group tab uh, with inside a channel, those stay in indefinitely uh, through there with it. So not being dodgy on the question, uh, we hope to have full guidance available uh, and published from, from legal here shortly. Um, and just to, sorry, Go ahead, Teresa. I was just gonna say, we had another question about um, how can you delete a previous conversation? Um, somebody said they can only find the ability to hide it. Um, it's one year, isn't it, Jason? Yeah, one year. And I believe... I, I thought I had that in here, but it's probably on the OneDrive page. Uh, I think it's, it's under Teams, FAQ, I think, retention. Teams. Ah, 
Ah, retention settings. Yep. Good call. I'm glad you remember where I put stuff better than I do. All right, next. Um, the next question is, does opening a document allow for real-time editing by a group? Does it need to be opened a certain way? No, you should just be able to open it right in Microsoft Teams. I've done it with um, our project manager on the ARC team before where we have worked on a, a document together. So it, it does need to be Office documents. Yes. So Word, Sorry. PowerPoint, Excel. Yeah, it just has to be opened from Teams in a current version of Microsoft Office, which uh, should have rolled out to everybody by now, or in the web app. Um, the next question I'm trying to see, it looks like Jason, do you have a, were you going to answer a question or did, I don't think you did already about, um, understanding file storage and sharing? No, I, I marked that one to, to, to answer. Cause there's, there's, okay. I think there's a couple in there with it. So, yeah. um, the person's asking, it's kind of a little bit around structure through there. Uh, if you have, uh, they have an example here where they've got a box folder shared with five people and another one shared with other people, a little bit of overlap. Do you need two different teams, two different channels? So when structuring a team, you want to think about what you're working on from that perspective and create it more based around project flow or a, a, a team. I hate to use the word again, but, but your actual team that you work with through there um, in that part. So maybe you need to, maybe you don't. Not sure what the context of, of the files are being used um, through there with it. The, the other part you have is Teams is designed for that group collaboration where you want this other interaction where I'm going to have meetings. I want group chat history. I want some of those functions. That's what Teams provides. If you want to just simply share a file with a number of people for them to work on together, but it's not in a, you know, a tightly defined team concept, you have that capability in OneDrive um, through there with it, just to simply save the file in OneDrive, share the folder out to those individual folks, uh, and then they can all work on it. Same thing, it's co-authored in that. You don't need the overhead and extra structure that a team provides for for that through there. So I hate to plug the next <laughs> the next webinar, but th it is in the the OneDrive webinar. So this is that's what you'll learn. Uh, is that the first or second week of October? So first week of October, I think. Um, we will go here into Microsoft OneDrive. Yeah, uh, ten six and ten seven. Um, I think once you take the OneDrive webinars, a lot of the questions that I'm seeing in the Q&A are going to be answered for you because they're more about OneDrive than they are really about Teams. We have quite a few questions actually about file storage. Um, people are asking, is Teams the new online file storage replacing Box? Um, another person asked, is there a limit on file size? Can you have folders in Teams? Um, those are all OneDrive questions. So anyone that has asked that question, um, that's a OneDrive focused question and come back for the OneDrive webinar. We have quite a few of those. Yeah. Uh, that people are asking about storage and files and sharing files and so yeah. on. Teams is more about group collaboration. It has the the files in it, but you're really looking at those through Teams. They exist in OneDrive. So we will answer every OneDrive question out there in the next webinars. Um, there was a question about the calendar. How does the calendar work? Does it show only your personal calendar or does it show events that are specific just to the team? Um, is there a different calendar for each channel within a team? No, your calendar is your calendar. Um, when you, you notice you don't get to your calendar through the team, you get to your calendar using that icon on the left-hand side and it's yours. That's your calendar. You can create a new meeting in here if you want to and you do have basic uh, visual control such as your day, your work week, uh, the full week, which would include whatever your weekends are, uh, but it's yours. It, it has nothing to do with the team. Um, so Eric is asking about Skype and Teams. So when Skype goes away, will Teams ring through the app on my phone like Skype does? I'm going to say yes, because it does for me now when I have a Teams to Teams call. 
come through, it rings on my phone and my iPad that I have installed Teams on. Um, right now, Teams is not handling regular phone calls. It's only team to team communication, uh, but eventually, yeah, it should ring. So eventually calls will come through Teams rather than Skype. Yes, I don't have a timeline on that. Jason, do you? So w there is a discussions and evaluation ongoing to look at upgrading Skype for Business te to Teams for the telephony side of the, the thing. We are, are set to begin planning in January for that with uh, uh, probably fiscal 22 uh, project uh, kickoff to actually begin that, uh, that work. So don't worry about it. It's not happening right now. We can focus on Buckeye Box and Teams and OneDrive. We don't yes. have to worry about the phones yet. Yeah, only a few major changes at a time here. I'm going to yeah. keep that down. Um, this question might have been answered by now, but where is the video and audio on Teams? Can you show that? No, I can't. I, I really wish I could. Um, I am currently using video and audio through Zoom. So if I try to use it through Teams, it'll bomb out my Zoom webinar. Ask me how I know, because <laughs> I've already tried it. However, um, like when you open a meeting here, I know I've got one somewhere in my calendar. And this is probably in the arc too. Yeah. Um, but let's say... Uh, Teresa, do we have a meeting? Oh, we got rid of our meeting. Uh, there's one. I'll go to an old meeting. But opening a Teams meeting is just like opening a Skype for Business meeting. There's no difference. You open the calendar, you're going to click join Microsoft Teams meeting, and the Teams interface is going to open up and it functions just like Skype for Business did. You've got a share button so you can share your content, whether it's your screen or an application or a PowerPoint presentation. Um, audio works the same. You can mute and unmute your microphone, just like we are in Zoom. So yeah. Mandy, I know we're getting close to 11 here and there's a couple I wanna address here. Go right ahead. Really quickly. So there's, there's a question here about, can current Ohio State students be added to a team you create? Can they manage students to do with it. So Ohio State students have the same capabilities in teams as OSU employees. So everything we're talking about here, students have the same capabilities to do. They are not restricted and limited in any way like we've done with other project, uh, uh, platforms that we've put out there with it. So you can add a student to a team. You need to add them as their Buckeye mail address, though. And that's how they'll be logging in and interacting with, with that. But they have the same uh, features and capabilities from that standpoint. Obviously, they're limited in what teams they can create because they're a student as opposed to uh, an employee. So they can't create the, the class one, as Mandy mentioned early. Uh, the other one here is about data security level for what can be stored in Teams. Currently, it is at S3. The review is ongoing right now that will allow us to move to S4 uh, through there. And then an eventual approval is also being sought for HIPAA data um, through there with it. So that the review is ongoing right now, which is why we're still S3, but it will eventually be S4 through there. And obviously, that page Mandy's looking at there will be updated to reflect that when it is fully completed. When it happens. Uh, the other one here is level of Carmen Canvas integration uh, through there. Teams itself right now is, is separate than Carmen Canvas. There, there are talks at, at much higher levels about some options there, but there's no, no, no strategy or anything to announce on, on that at this time. Um, it does have OneDrive in, in integration though. So you can upload a file from OneDrive into Carmen Canvas. Uh, another person asked her, what's the timeline for the transition? So there's a couple of things. Teams is available today for people to use. That's why we're do doing uh, uh, these webinars so people know about it. The box migration is actually planning and the project is kicking off now. It'll run through June of next year. More details about dates of when units will move and stuff will, will be coming available through there with it. But um, Teams is available right now. OneDrive is also available for use. Any others? Any other questions, Jason, Teresa? We have um, still 42, around 42 questions open. So do we just want to talk about how people can 
get those questions answered either by going to the Administrative Resource Center themselves or through FAQs? Um, yeah, a, a lot of these questions are OneDrive related because um, I'm, I'm scrolling through. So for those that have asked questions about file size, storage capabilities, things like that, um, come back for the OneDrive <laughs> webinars. I promise they will be answered there. Um, if you've got other Teams related questions, please come to the ARC. Uh, the Administrative Resource Center, we want it to answer all of your questions. Not that we don't want to talk to you, but we want you to have one place where you can go and get your answers question, questions answered without having to ask a million people. If something's not here and it's a question that you have, reach out uh, to the training department and we will see what we can do about getting it in there. Uh, most all of your questions should be answered somewhere in there, though. Um, the details about using a team, you go into meetings and calls, um, details about teams and channels, go into teams and channels. Don't get lost down rabbit holes though. That's easy. It happens very easily. Um, if you don't find something, reach out and ask, call the IT service desk. Um, they might be able to help as well. But um, anything, oh, there's a good question in here, accessibility with teams. Uh, I'm big on accessibility. Uh, Jason, I'm going to let you field that. Uh, I know that the majority of teams is accessible, but there are still pieces that are not, correct? Cor correct. So uh, Teams itself, it's been updated, so it's still going, it's going through a re-review right now on a couple of things, but it is accessible from that standpoint. But one thing that's, that's often, it's noted in the, the ARC in a number of pages, is Teams provides a automated uh, AI-powered closed captioning in meetings and live, and live events, events. Uh, that uh, works out. Uh, very well through there. It does not currently, it's currently not recognized as meeting our digital accessibility uh, policy. Uh, there's discussions and things going on about uh, that, uh, but that currently does not meet that, that level that we need through there. Uh, as far as interactions with tab controls, movement, screen readers, uh, Teams is all capable of that. Okay, great. I have kept you guys well over the 30 minutes that were, was allotted, but I kind of had an idea yesterday we went this long as well. Um, this webinar is being recorded and we will post it, so feel free to share it. Uh, it will be on the ARC, uh, so give us some time though to make the video accessible before you go looking for it, all right? Um, thank you so much for wonderful questions. Jason, Teresa, for fielding all of them for me in the q and I, I do appreciate that. Um, and I look forward to seeing everybody in the OneDrive sessions in October. Have a great day.